as the forces within the volcano built up to, uh, to the point where they would begin to overcome the friction forces holding the flank in place. The flank would begin to move towards the sea. And then at some point, the rock will fail on a major scale. And this huge chunk of rock, maybe 20 kilometers long or, or more, will start to slide into the sea. The waves initially here would be many hundreds of meters high, and those waves would all be moving out into the ocean, spreading out laterally, but with a lot of the energy heading across the Atlantic towards the coast of the Americas. Looking down on it, it'll, it'll look unbelievable. It'll look as if the island is falling apart, generating these huge waves which are fanning outwards to reach the eastern coast of the United States. The waves will take about eight hours to travel between here and the coast of America. Just enough time to get the message out, to warn people that this event was, was happening. But unless evacuation plans were incredibly efficient, it would not be enough time to get everybody out of the affected areas. The areas at risk include cities like Miami, parts of Boston, the coastal areas and suburbs of New York. We're standing on the beach in what is presently Miami. The very first effect you'd probably see is what we call a drawback. The ocean would suddenly just pull away. You'd see a tide, a low tide, like you've never seen before in your life. It would be actually spellbinding. But in the background, you'd be seeing this wall, and it would keep, keep coming at you. This will be the biggest natural catastrophe in history. There's a problem with all major natural catastrophes. Because we've never experienced these things, we don't think that they're going to happen to us. We just ignore them. But these sorts of events have occurred throughout geological history. They're not going to stop happening just because we're around. This is La Palma, one of the Canary Islands, a paradise for sun-loving tourists. For us, the island holds quite another fascination, the Combre Vieja volcano. The brittle western slope of the volcano is covered in clefts and fissures where water has collected. And now for the interesting part. By placing several bombs in carefully calculated spots, we can use thermonuclear explosions to heat that water so that it will evaporate instantaneously. If you had paid attention in your physics classes, you would know that such a sudden evaporation of water would create sufficient pressure to shatter the volcano's brittle slope and send it crashing into the sea. Can you guess what comes next? That's right, a tsunami. Waves 200 meters high will charge across the Atlantic with the speed of an airplane. The tsunami will sweep across the east coast of the United States. New York will disappear in an apocalyptic flood, taking with it the self-proclaimed rulers of the world who are currently squabbling in blind incompetence at the UN headquarters. The resulting vacuum of power will be filled by our followers, some of whom have been biding their time in key positions for decades. They will take control and lead humankind to a new golden age. The destruction of New York was foretold in 1988. You don't believe me? I'll show you. There is apocalypse in New York and all its buildings are falling. It's impressive. 
and scary. It stands before your very eyes. The Cathedral Church of St. John the Divine is named after John of Patmos, believed to be the author of the Book of Revelation and erroneously identified as St. John the Evangelist as the author of such book. St. John the Divine is portrayed in the main portal, exactly in between the two doors, right before four very interesting figures. John was exiled to the small Greek island of Patmos as the result of an anti-Christian persecution under the Roman Emperor Domitian. The Book of Revelation, with its apocalyptic vision, is actually a book against Rome, which conquered Jerusalem in 70 Anno Domini. The book seemed to be a description of the punishment they thought God would inflict on Rome. Many Jewish writers often refer to Rome as Babylon, the other empire that had exiled the Jews, Adding the word whore to Babylon was a way to outline Rome had been unfaithful to God. Many people who see the Statue of Liberty as a satanic symbol often identify the Statue of Liberty as the whore of Babylon. It is interesting to notice that in a portal the Statue of Liberty is falling along with the Stock Exchange and the Twin Towers. In this vision, Babylon and New York seem to be one and the same. New York as Babylon, which made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Examples of fornications and perversion can be easily spotted on the facade of the church. As a confirmation all these scenes are from the book of Revelation, we see the statue of St. John the Divine right above the statue of the four riders mentioned in chapter 6. The first one has a bow and is wearing a crown. The second has a sword, while the third one is with a scale. The fourth is riding a pale horse, and his name is Death. On the north side of the portal, opposite this scene, we find mentions of the Lamb of God. And right above what looks like a ram, a notorious demonic symbol, a baby seemingly be born, the dragon, the corruption of morals and more. It is the apocalypse as we know it. Many people, also tapping from the mansion the church received in a famous Masonic magazine in 1925, see this place as evil, sinister and dangerous. On the other hand, the doors show Christian images with the four evangelists, who can also be seen at the arch right above the doors, standing by Jesus' side. Left of the church, in the Peace Garden, we see the beautiful and surreal Peace Fountain, a bronze sculpture by Greg Wyatt. All around the statue are quotes of great people, including Mahatma Gandhi. The statue features a crab, the decapitated head of Satan, the double helix of DNA and nine giraffes. Whatever the truth is, St. John the Divine remains one of the most beautiful examples of religious art in New York.